And with that, of course, we have to talk about how this shakes things up for the Toronto Maple Leafs. I mean, everyone out there who watches hockey knows this is a fantastic addition yes. to the team. But how do you think these lines now are going to shape up for the Toronto Maple Leafs? Well, it's really interesting because I still think even to this degree, when you add him, I still think the leading scorer last year was Mitch Marner. I still think this guy's going to be a leading okay. point getter. For I like that team. we have the telestrator out. Yes, this, we got by the, the telestrator we're gonna have out. Some fun here with my. Yes, Rob. we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna throw some some lines together. <laughs> what we think will will work. I okay. Mean, you have these players, so let's start here with number thirty-four, Austin Matthews. That's Four. what a centerpiece for an organization. The obvious ninety-one down the middle there. Yeah. The obvious. 43. Might need to start a little smaller. I can't. I have fat <laughs> fingers. So this is this is this this foundation right there you see doesn't get my goodness. It it might not get better in the National Hockey League than this. You could maybe argue Pittsburgh, Crosby, Malkin, mm -hmm. Broussard, if Broussard gets this gets game going, around, if they yeah. use him on that third line. But this is where it gets interesting here. You have some flexibility. You have uh, you have the top line here. You've got Willie Nylander on the one side, and you've got Hyman on the other side. Uh, they had JVR, so we'll write a little JVR in here. So he is not here any longer. And Good job, Rupper. Yes, and then this is where it gets really nice, too, because this is where you've got Mitch Marner. You got Mitch Marner right there. And I'm going to put a little star there because this guy, that's supposed to be a star. He's a He is a superstar, and he will still, I mean, the, the luxury you have with having Austin Matthews, might be your third leading point getter on your team. That's incredible. And then you then you move forward and you have uh, you know you have Kovar, uh, Komarov. Well, some of these players will be uh, will be all moving around. Third, fourth line. There's a lot of hole openings right yes. now. Uh, then you've got this is one of my one of my phase right here. Let's see how we can do this. I'm going to get a little creative here, Jackie. Okay. Just so what, you know. What's going on here? I'm going to get just a little bit creative here. Do you know what that oh, is right there? That's a that's I know what that is. That's, that's a turtleneck, in this my turtleneck. friend. <laughs> See his nice little striped turtleneck I wish right there. Zoom in on this. Yeah, so, but he is out also. So they have a lot of gaps open in this lineup. But let's not forget, you got Connor Brown. This is another big piece, young piece right here. You've got some spots that are open up in camp. You've got right. you've got Kasperi Kapanen. You've got uh, Jor uh, how you say Josh it? Joris. Uh, Josh Joris. Uh, Josh Levo has been trying Levo. to crack the lineup a long time. So it, it, Andreas Janssen, it, it, there's opportunity screaming. But the biggest thing is, when you look at it, you've got the top nine right there in the National Hockey League. doesn't get much better than that. It's going to be screaming offense. And, uh, yeah, offense will not be an issue for the Toronto Maple It will not be an issue. Uh, it, it's going to be a tough team to play against as far as puck possession, and you got to be willing to score. you got to be able to score goals to beat this and team. And I think Mike Babcock must just be, like, licking his chops, thinking about the options that he has for his power play heading into next season with all the talent that you just highlighted. What would you do? How do you see it sort of shaping up? Well, the one thing that we're, they're going to have to figure out what to do, and, and we can't mistake in the big goals that JVR scored, having him right there on the power play, net front presence Ooh, was that, huge. And JVR got paid and this offseason. So that's going to be vacant. But the one okay. thing, that, so you could look at it one of two ways. Do you want to stack the deck? Depending on the situation in the game and you really need a goal, uh, maybe it's late in the game, maybe you stack the, stack the deck a little sure. bit. Uh, but the one thing that John Tavares does really well in the way the New York Islanders use him, he's that middle relief guy, that kind of the high slot guy. He drew him up a little bit high there. Let's move him down a little bit more. <laughs> you put him right there. And then Beautiful. usually you've got, you've got Jake Gardner up top. And this is the area of the ice. That he's that you'll see Tavares. He's going to be patrolling. He's going to be the release valve, but he can also move all around the ice. Then you've also got Austin Matthews. And the way I love this Leafs power play, the way they do it, they, it doesn't matter. They're not set and married to the side that they have to be on. So you could have a side where you have Austin Matthews on one side here. You can have Willie Nylander on this side here. You're going to have to figure out who the net front president is. It's going to be another opportunity for someone to sure. step up. Or I would love, love to also see Austin Matthews move down on the goal line here and you can throw another player you can throw another player up in the mix and get him involved uh, uh, you've got Connor Brown that you can use on it you've got uh, Patrick Marlowe might be another player in front of the net it's really interesting but this is that's on the, if you're gonna stack it on one but on the other one listen if you can have one power play where you have 34 slash second power play 91 yeah. you can have you can have a Nylander on the top unit then you could follow it up with uh, you can have uh, uh, Mitch Marner on this side, 
Jake Gardner up top there. Morgan Riley's what, 44? You can have a Morgan Riley in there. You can have a Nas Kadri down on the goal line. I mean, there's no shortage here. You have Connor Brown as a slot presence. You can have Patrick Marlowe in there. I mean, there yeah. is so much. I mean, you're just sp we're just spitballing here. There's so many options <laughs> for this. Say that's team. too many men, but and the, yeah, <laughs> that, that's too many. You've got, <laughs> but the the great part about it is they have pieces that can inter interchange. You know what I just thought of too, just now. Like, think about if they're down a goal in a game and they pull the goalie. Think about the caliber of player that's coming on the ice. It's insane. It's, it's crazy. Insane. The one thing I think Especially this team. Especially if they have a power play. The one thing I like for this team, uh, someone's, uh, I would like to see at least one or two players grab the bull by the horns with is, I think they need to have a shooter, a shooter. Patrick Marlowe has scored goals in his career. Can he be the the, the shooter? Uh, we know that uh, Austin Matthews has scored goals, but he's kind of a facilitator. He is a facilitator. Uh, John Tavares, he's a facilitator. I'd like to see someone who's going to capitalize on these playmakers and just they know when the puck goes through this player, it's going towards the net. JBR was a very simple player that in a lot of ways added some of those attributes within the 10-foot range of the net. Uh, that's going to be big for this team. But this team has all set up, and they can do whatever they want, move pieces around all day long. A lot of good players to add to your fantasy teams yes, uh, next tons. year. We've obviously highlighted the stellar offense, but what about defense? This is something that's been talked about with the Toronto Maple Leafs the last few seasons that needs to be better. What do you make of the Leafs on the blue line where they stand right now? This could change, obviously. There's a lot of uh, offseason left to go, but your thoughts on this so far? Do they need to add anybody? Well, I mean, ideally, yeah, you'd like to add somebody here. Uh, we've all heard, and it's been well documented, this is probably their, well, not probably, it is, is their, weakest, their, weak spot. Spot. their yeah. weakest spot. But I will also say that you have a Wiley veteran player in Ron Hainsey, where if you're going to use him as a 5-6 D-man or a 1-2 D-man, he's going to ad lib and do what he needs to do to contribute to the team. Uh, you've also got to understand some of these players, uh, a lot of those D-men are, are young. You've got Morgan Riley, you've got Jake Gardner, you've got Nikita Zaitsev. These players, uh, you've got you've got Carrick, you've got these other players coming in here. We haven't seen their ceiling yet. So one more year under their belt sure. could pay dividends. I think if I'm this team, if you don't get the right fit right now, just hold pat and see how the season goes. You might be able to get something at the deadline.